In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to do pelvic tilts with a block. So I've already got pelvic tilts on my channel and uh, kind of normally it's done without having a block between your knees, but I've actually decided that I really like doing pelvic tilts personally with a block between my knees. And I think it gives a little bit more kind of anchoring and stability through the hip and pelvic area to get the strength into the bits that we want to get the strength into. So lots of people, when they do their pelvic tilts, which look a bit like this, we kind of rock backwards, we rock forwards, we rock backwards, we rock forwards. Lots of people, when they do this, their knees end up kind of wobbling all over the place. And that changes what happens at the hip. So the block, this way around, so this kind of medium way, not the narrow way, not the super wide way, the medium way, in between the knees, keeps them at hip width apart. And we're also making sure that our ankles and our feet are in a straight line as well. So we don't want the toes wider than the ankles. Everything is in a straight line. If someone was looking down at your toes, all the way up your legs, up to the hip. Palms facing up, relaxed at the side, wherever is, is as is comfortable for you. You're gonna maintain a gentle squeeze into the block in between your knees. Not a 10 out of 10, I'm trying to murder the block, but maybe a kind of three out of 10, just so there's a little bit of tension there and you'll just feel like a bit of a muscular reaction on the inner thighs and possibly down into the hips. And for our pelvic tilts, all we are doing is we are using our pelvis to tip backwards, so tip backwards posteriorly, which kind of squishes our lower back onto the floor and you'll feel a little bit of tension in your abs. This is a posterior pelvic tilt. This is pelvic flexion, keeping that strength in the knees, remember. And then you tilt forwards from the pelvis to create an arch in your lower back and the abs will relax slightly. And as you pull forwards like this, you might feel a little bit of reaction into your hip flexors here at the front of your groin. So you're just moving backwards posteriorly. The bottom doesn't lift off the floor rocking forwards anteriorly, slight arch to the lower back, backwards, forwards, you're going really slowly here, there's no, nothing to be gained by speeding through this one, backwards and forwards, getting a sense of that kind of rhythm and what is going on, you should not be squeezing your glutes here, you should not, bleh, 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 bleh. should not be squeezing your glutes here, your bottom muscles. You should not be squeezing your abdominals here and you should not be squeezing your pelvic floor either. This is purely done off this hinge point at the pelvis, okay? So if the hips were waking up and doing their job properly, which hopefully they are because you're squeezing the block, you should feel how you've got this kind of strength here that pulls you forwards and allows you to push back. This is not about clamping the glute on like you might do if you were doing a bridge. It's really about pivoting at the pelvis, okay? So abs are relaxed, but then when you push back posteriorly, you'll get like a little bit of a contraction there just because that's the reaction of what's going on. And then the other way, you'll notice that the hip flexors kind of tighten and work, and that's good. This is a hip flexor exercise. We're moving the pelvis backwards and forwards. This is kind of stage one. The next thing I want you to assess is whether or not you think your pelvis is doing the same thing from side to side. So if you put your hands on the bony bits of your hips here at the front and either feel actively with your fingers or get a sense of how your pelvis interacts with the ground, do you feel any differences from side to side as you do this rocking movement? So I know that I can just feel my slight pelvic disparity as I do this. It's like a heartbeat. The right side drives forward a little bit more quickly than the left hand side. In an ideal world, you would do this for as long as it takes for you to feel this rhythmic bilateral movement from side to side. So the intention of pelvic tilts is that we're getting your pelvis moving forwards and backwards into flexion and extension. It's a very important movement to um, sort of maintain, but we also want it to be that you're doing the same thing from side to side in your pelvis. So I can't tell you how long this is gonna take. It might take 10 reps, it might take 50 reps, it might take 100 reps, but just do as many as it takes until you think, you know what, I think that my pelvis is rocking forwards and it's feeling the same from side to side. Remember to keep that little bit of gentle pressure on with the um, block at the same time. 
and you are working within your limits here. So you're not trying to force this range of movement past the point that is comfortable for you, but hopefully as you do more of them, you'll notice that your mobility starts to get a little bit more and that you might notice that actually that's the point when your pelvis feels more level. So at the start, it might feel a bit pinchy in the lower back. Um, you can kind of feel that there's something different happening at the sacrum and at the pelvis. And then actually as things loosen up, you're thinking, oh, I'm actually getting a bigger arch in my lower back when I rock myself forward, myself forward anteriorly. Or I'm really able to squish my lower back on the floor this time without there being any discomfort. So you're always working within the limits of what your body can do pain free, but you are trying to get as much range of movement as you can. And you are trying to um, sort of encourage a little bit more range of movement every time. The other thing I also want you to note here, maybe I should have said it earlier, is don't use your feet to ground down into the floor. So you might notice that you really kind of power down into your feet to jerk you backwards through your pelvis. We don't want that. The feet are they're straight, but they're relaxed. You can use the block to help drive that strength into the pelvis. So don't push aggressively down into the feet. And remember, this is not a glute exercise, it's not a pelvic floor exercise, and it's not an abdominal exercise, it's a hip flexor exercise. So really feel like this is the point where it's all happening from, this is the pivot point at those hip flexors, and this is helping to create the arch in the lower back and also flatten the lower back off. So that's pelvic tilts with a block.